Good afternoon, this is Michael Ward. I'm a partner of FWO Chartered Accountants and welcome to the webinar today, which is uh, about retirement planning and working out whether or not you have a gap in terms of what you need when you choose to retire uh, to fund uh, your future living costs. So today uh, we need to start with, uh, everybody has a goal or an objective at some stage in their life to retire. Uh, as to where you are in that sort of phase of your life, uh, you may be well away from choosing to retire or it may be um, coming up in the, say the next five to 10 years. Either way, uh, we all need to think about uh, one day uh, when we are going to retire and how are we going to fund our lifestyle going from there. So retirement planning has become a big issue for us and our clients in terms of uh, helping them achieve their goals. Um, retirement planning is very much a, a common factor for most of our clients at some stage in their life. They need to start giving thought to how they're going to, or when they're going to retire and how they're going to be able to fund uh, what they need in their future retirement years. So, as I said previously, um, you know, for some people that is going to be a long way away uh, in terms of where they're at at the moment. Uh, but at some stage, they need to give some thought to it. And you also need to give some thought to what sort of lifestyle are you wanting to have, because that will very much de determine how much money you're going to need to support that lifestyle. Um, and the question that uh, a lot of our clients have been asking us uh, that have turned their mind to the issue of retirement planning is, do I have enough funds or will I have enough funds when it, it comes my time to sort of make a choice to retire? Um, you know, in the old days, uh, uh, people used to retire around age 65 and, uh, and uh, the life expectancy wasn't uh, much uh, longer than that age. So there wasn't much thought given to sort of uh, providing sufficient funds for their retirement. But the average Australian now spends in excess of 20 years in retirement. So, and the life, the average life expectancy is now 82 years of age. And obviously with advanced health um, technologies and medicines, that's just going to increase further uh, as the years roll by. And an interesting statistic is that, um, and, and, and an issue as to why we do need to think about planning for retirement is that over the next 40 years, the number of Australians over age 65 will triple to 30% of our population, which is quite an amazing statistic. Um, we've already seen that the government has pushed out uh, the retirement age or the mandatory retirement age of 65 to 67 in terms of payment of pensions. But uh, so you can see that that going forward, that trend is probably going to be pushed out or that age uh, requirement is going to be pushed out further. So why do we need to plan to retire? Well, simply because of our greater longevity of, of living, um, you know, we're needing to fund our costs of living. So we need to be able to accumulate sufficient levels of assets that are going to be of a certain amount that's going to be able to fund what our costs of living are going to be when we choose to retire. Um, and so we need to determine uh, whether we're going to have enough funds to to cover the length of time that we expect to be in retirement. So how much will you need is um, an interesting question. Um, the Australian Superannuation Funds uh, Association in Australia has come up with an amazing figure of $56,339 after tax per year as being enough for people to retire and live comfortably on. My question would be, is $56,000 per annum really enough? Um, and later on, I'll take you through an exercise or a tool that we use for our clients in terms of determining whether there's a gap um, in their uh, asset accumulation against what they need to fund their retirement. And um, I don't think, in my personal view, $56,000 is, is not enough money in today's dollars. How much you will need to retire is obviously dependent on a number of facts, factors. Um, 
uh, it's obviously going to be determined by or influenced by the age that you commence retirement, what your life expectancy is, whether or not you wish to um, leave capital in your estate for your family members uh, when you die, uh, what the rate of return on your investments is, obviously that very much influence how much your capital grows. And obviously, again, the after-tax annual income that you require for your lifestyle. Um, just on that point, um, it, it does need to be acknowledged that uh, probably the requirement for an after-tax annual income is, is at its highest in the earlier years of your retirement. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, as people age, their requirement for spending diminishes. Um, and uh, obviously, maybe in the earlier years of retirement, people might want to go overseas and travel a lot extensively. Uh, but as they get older, the inclination or the desire to do that uh, uh, sometimes wanes. Uh, so, but nevertheless, uh, those different factors are going to vary for different people. So we, we need to sort of consider all of those options. Uh, the next couple of slides are just to um, give you an example of um, some uh, case study situations where just to bring out this point of, um, you know, how much will people need when they choose to retire. In this first example, we've got James and Donna who are already age 65 and wanting to retire right now. So they've reached their retirement age of 65 and they've determined that they have an after-tax annual income requirement of $100,000 per annum to fund their lifestyle. Um, they have current assets or investable assets in their superannuation of 1.5 million and on a average rate of return of 7.2% per annum, which is um, probably a realistic return in today's uh, markets. Um, they, uh, uh, this graph shows by draw drawing down on an annual basis to fund that $100,000, uh, which will grow by inflation each year, you can see that their uh, 1.5 million that's in superannuation depletes to zero uh, by the time they reach 90 years of age. So in this situation, they there is no gap. They do um, have enough money in investable assets at the beginning of their retirement years to fund their $100,000 per annum, which is, will probably increase by, say, 3% CPI each year, <coughs> excuse me, um, to fund their lifestyle. And um, their target of being able to fund their lifestyle for the next 30 years to age 90 has been achieved. That's assuming a, a return on their assets of about 7.2% per annum, which is not an unrealistic return. So in that scenario, uh, they've reached their goal. Another example is Bill and Joan. They're currently both age 50. Bill's working full-time. Joan is working part-time. Uh, Bill earns about 120000 per annum. Uh, Joan, 40000 per annum. They've currently got 800000 in superannuation. So they've got a further 10 years to go each before they stop working. Um, again, we're assuming a 7.2% per annum return. That's income and capital on their superannuation assets. They've got a mortgage, existing mortgage on their home, uh, paying interest at 7% on that. Uh, but that will be retired over the next 10 years while they're still working. So there won't be any mortgage at the time they choose to retire. And in this situation, they've worked out that they need 120000 per annum in today's dollars to fund their lifestyle. So the graph for this one shows that um, their investable assets actually deplete by age 76. So it's not going to achieve their goal of getting to age 80. So uh, in this situation, there is a gap and they haven't achieved their goal of being able to fund um, their retirement up till age 80. And in fact, there's about a five year gap here. So work needs to be done. And this is the whole issue about retirement planning. Um, and I'll take you through the exercise of what we do with clients and how we work this out for them. Uh, you've really got to address these issues early uh, and not sort of within the, uh, the last couple of years of your working before you choose to retire. Conservatively, I think people need to be seriously considering retirement and planning for it 10 years out uh, because that gives them time to 
to take corrective action if there is a gap in terms of um, what savings they've got or what assets they've got and what they need to have to fund their lifestyle uh, when they do choose to retire. Um, if there is a gap that's determined, in other words, that they haven't got sufficient assets at the moment to fund their uh, predicted retirement uh, requirement in the future years, then we need to be talking about and developing strategies as to how we can close that gap. And we need time to be able to do that. Um, for that last example, a possible strategy to close that gap would be to commence a transition to retirement strategy at age 55, which uh, 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 people that have got a preservation age of 55 can do. Uh, the real trick with that is, is that uh, they can continue to work, they can continue to um, make contributions to their self-managed superannuation fund, and effectively what they're doing is getting savings into a very low tax environment because by turning on a transition to retirement pension after they've reached their preservation age, what it does is that it effectively um, makes the earnings within their fund tax exempt, at least for the amount of assets that are funding the pension. So in a transition to retirement strategy, whilst they're continuing to contribute and whatever contributions go into that self-managed superannuation fund, they will be taxable, but the bulk of the uh, assets of the superannuation fund are are now funding a transition to retirement pension. And uh, as soon as the fund is in pension mode, to the extent that assets are funding that pension, the income earned on those assets within the fund become tax exempt. Obviously, for someone under age 60, a component of their pension is taxable in their hands. Um, it depends on whether there's a, a tax taxable component or a tax-free component of their pension. Um, and um, there is a a rebate that they're entitled to up to 15% on their pension. But obviously once they turn over age 60, um, any pension paid out of a self-managed superannuation fund is tax-free after that uh, age. So the the uh, the strategy in terms of commencing uh, a transition to a retirement strategy before they actually permanently retire is basically to enable um, funds that are already in superannuation to attract the zero tax rate um, and also to still enable uh, the person receiving that pension to still contribute to superannuation and still work. Uh, and obviously, the more money that they can put into a zero tax or a low tax environment such as self-managed superannuation fund, the faster the net assets in the fund can grow because um, uh, there's very little of it being whittled away in paying tax. So the more after-tax money that's reinvested through your superannuation fund um, enables your savings to grow at a much faster rate. So um, that's, that's the strategy in terms of commencing a transition to retirement strategy at an earlier age or when, when somebody's reached their preservation age, which is firstly a requirement before you can access your super. Um, but that's a common strategy that people are now employing and we're using with a lot of our clients uh, to fast track and fast track the growth of their investments that uh, are ultimately going to fund their future retirement. So in that example that we looked at before where previously they were going to exhaust all their superannuation savings by age 75 by simply employing a, a transition to retirement strategy we've been able to push that out to age 82. So they've actually extended their retirement goal from 80 to 82 years of age. So they've been able to, by simply implementing a strategy like that, um, you can see that this graph has now pushed it out and all their superannuation savings are only exhausted after age 82. So uh, they've been able to um, close that gap and actually um, get a better outcome. So. Uh, coming back to the question of uh, how much you will need, we've actually developed a tool uh, for our clients um, that we call our Retirement Gap Calculator. Um, and it starts with firstly working out what people will be spending 
when they choose to retire. So we've got a budget calculator here that just goes through the major components of living and the expenditure that you would expect to have. Um, and we very quickly, in working with a client, can um, enter in this budget to determine um, what their annual living costs are going to be. So this budget is broken down to things like transport costs, you know, um, home costs, all the utilities like phone, electricity, um, water, uh, health costs, entertainment costs, uh, and, uh, and so forth, depending on whether or not they've got children that they're still funding. Uh, what this budget does is calculates for us what uh, they're likely to be spending on an annual basis. So in this example uh, of a client, we've worked out that their annual costs to live are going to be in today's dollars, 97684 So uh, we start by sort of logging in the client, what their personal uh, situation is, um, what their, obviously what their date of birth is, their current age, and their proposed retirement uh, age. So that helps us determine uh, how many years they've got to plan for their retirement. Uh, what, who are their dependents? And then we break down what their assets are that they've got at the moment between what we call lifestyle assets, obviously your, your home and uh, contents and cars. Uh, and we separate that from investment assets because the investment assets are the ones that you're basically going to be relying on to produce the income to fund your future retirement uh, living costs. And in this example, um, a client, Mr. Sample, is currently age 51, wants to retire at age 60, has a wife, Colleen, age 49. They have a residence at, valued at a million dollars with contents of 50,000 and cars of 100,000. Uh, Mr. Sample has a business and its current valuation is 1.5 million, has 120,000 in shares, uh, 50,000 in managed funds and about 100,000 in superannuation. Uh, currently has a home mortgage and a business loan. Uh, the mortgage uh, of 500,000 is to be retired over the next nine years. So, uh, however, uh, the investable assets are really the investment assets less those borrowings. So in this example, there's 654,000 of investable assets. So we sit down with our client and we work out what their goals and objectives are uh, over the next three years and 10 years. Uh, in three years time, uh, Mr. Sample's goals are to reduce hours worked in the business to 30 hours per week. But more importantly, in 10 years time, wants to retire and be receiving 100,000 100, after tax per annum. Uh, you recall in our budget calculator, we've worked out that their costs of living are about 97,000. So um, we're looking to have a retirement income stream of 100,000 to fund uh, their lifestyle. Uh, they want to travel overseas each year at a cost of 15,000. Um, and he wants to position the business for a future sale and have his home loan paid out. So they're basically uh, Mr. Sample's goals and objectives. So here we have... Um, uh, a retirement target, current age 51, wanting to retire at 60, so nine years to go to retirement um, and expecting to live 30 years uh, beyond age 60, which is uh, not unrealistic given the sort of average life expectancy currently of about 82. Um, and we've factored in here living expenses of 100,000. So we've got a pre-built table here of what investable assets in today's dollars are required over various time periods like 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 25 years or 30 years, what, what in today's dollars of assets uh, would you need to be able to fund for 30 years uh, a, an annual living cost of 100000 So in this example, you go to the 30-year table for $100,000 of expenses and you find that they would need 1.61 million of assets. There's a few assumptions in this calculation, like 3% annual inflation, a 7.2% uh, growth, income and capital growth in investments, um, and uh, no tax on the earnings within a superannuation. We're assuming that they've turned on a pension. 
So determining whether or not there's a gap, um, uh, we've got that 654,000 of current investable assets projecting out for the next 9.3 years at a rate of return of 7.2%. That amount will grow to 1.251. Uh, we've determined that they need 1.61 of assets to fund their retirement over the next 30 years when they reach age 60. So in this case, there is a gap, um, and that, that gap is some 358,000 or thereabouts. So the idea of this gap assessment is to, to identify if there is a gap between uh, what you will need to fund your retirement um, and what you've currently got. So that we can have sufficient time to close that gap with implementing strategies um, to enable us to do that. So once we know whether or not there's a gap, we can then make some real decisions around what strategies need to be put into play to, um, to fund uh, their lifestyle. So hopefully that exercise has shown you um, has shown you what uh, is required uh, in terms of retirement planning. So thank you for attending today's webinar. And I'd like to make a special offer for the first 10 of you that uh, email me today. Uh, we're offering to, to do an FWO gap assessment uh, with a one-on-one -on -one strategy uh, meeting with you for a cost of $500. So um, I'm making that as a special offer for the first 10 that call today or email today. Uh, at, email me at michael at fwo.net.au and I'll be happy to sort of go through that FWO gap assessment um, uh, that I've just run through on today's webinar with you. Um, and obviously, it very much becomes a unique uh, strategy for each person. Uh, each person's needs are going to be different. Um, we looked at those factors previously in terms of what influences how much you will need when you choose to retire, and they're going to be different for different people. So, um, But we've got a defined methodology as to how we work through that process step by step with our clients so that we can unique uh, a one-on-one -on -one strategy for uh, each person that suits their circumstances. Um, so the big message I think I would like to get to everybody today is that uh, retirement is an issue that may not be on your radar or on your front of mind at this stage in your life, but it, it is something that we all should really start thinking about um, and putting some time and effort into uh, determining when that might be. Um, and if, if it's 20 years away, well, that's fine. That You've got plenty of time to sort of uh, think about things and you don't have to rush out tomorrow and uh, start madly uh, changing the way you do things in your life to sort of uh, uh, cope with that uh, uh, future, future retirement option. However, uh, for a lot of us, it might be a lot closer than that. It might be five years away or 10 years away. Um, and I would strongly suggest that if it's getting towards 10 years away, then you really need to be turning your mind to it now because 10 years is enough time to um, implement appropriate strategies to close any gap, if there is a gap, between um, what you need in terms of savings and investable assets to fund your required living costs when you choose to retire. Uh, for most of our clients, they have a business. Uh, so their business is very much a key part of their strategy in terms of funding their future retirement. Um, so, uh, you know, one of the best things that people can do with their business is to make them as profitable as they can because obviously the more profitable your business, the more valuable it is. As to whether you're going to sell your business or pass it to a next generation, that's obviously a unique decision for each person. But uh, certainly uh, owning a business and having that as part of your investable assets is very much a key 
a key ingredient for most of our clients in terms of their retirement planning. Um, and obviously superannuation, self-managed superannuation funds pay an incredibly important part in the strategies to um, close any gap between uh, what you will need and what you have to fund your future retirement. And the reason for that is because self-managed super funds, as we've shown in these slides today, uh, offer a, a very low tax or zero tax environment at, at certain stages as you move towards retirement. So thank you for attending today's webinar. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish everybody a, a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year as well. Um, and uh, to, to just uh, offer again for the first 10 uh, people that uh, contact, me, contact me by email today, we're offering a, a, an FWO gap assessment uh, with a one-on-one -on -one strategy developed for you for $500. Um, and uh, we're offering that exclusive to webinar participants today. So thank you very much for attending and um, goodbye for, for now. And uh, I look forward to speaking to you again at uh, our next webinar. Thank you.